Welcome back everybody, today we're here with another video and today we're going to show you how to create an IO field. Now in industry we don't just work with digital signals like a lamp or a push button, we also work with values and these values could be anything from temperatures to pressures to weight readings. Now to do that we display that on the HMI for the operator so he can see the current temperatures, the current weight or the current pressure of the system via an IO field and in some cases we can actually interact with that IO field and enter in our own settings and variables and we're going to show you all of that today now before we get started give the video a like and if you haven't subscribed to us already hit the subscribe button on our youtube channel or give us a like on our facebook to stay up to date with new videos right let's get started so currently on our HMI at the moment, we've got our home screen, which takes you to our control screen and our alarm screen. And if we just open up our control screen here, we've got our two push buttons going to our two lamps. And if we just open up our alarm screen, there are our alarms from last week. And these were the alarms that we created, our two high, high and low, low limit alarms. Now, what I want us to do is I want to create a new screen, which is going to be where we're going to display our data. So I'm just going to say add new screen and I'm going to rename this screen data view nice and simple I'm then gonna go to our home screen I'm gonna copy the button here paste that below like so and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new button to go to our data screen from here so data view if I now go to events and go to press it's now going to activate not the alarm screen but it's going to activate our data view screen and there we go so now if i go to my data view screen here it is and what i want to do as well is i want to add a button to go back to our home screen before we forget and we get stuck in an internal loop in our data view so i'm just going to grab the home button go back to my data view and insert that there now to create an IO field, all we do is we open up our elements folder from our toolbox and the very first object there is our IO field and I'm going to create two. I'm going to create one which is simply going to be display and another one which is going to be a display but also an interaction from the operator as well. So here all I'm going to do is select IO field and then click on the screen once, select IO field again and click on the screen again. And then I'm just going to place these on the HMI. Nice and neat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my basic objects, grab some text, and I'm going to type in here, set point. And then I'm going to type in again, actual, like so. There we go. Change these colors from gray to a dark color and then just line these up with my IO fields now what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to my tags my HMI tags open up our default tag table and then inside of here I'm going to create a integer which is going to display a value and the value that we're going to display is quite simply temperature so I'm just going to type in here temperature and the data type is going to be an INT, just an integer like so. Now if I go back to data view, what I can do with these IO fields is set them up to read our temperature. So I'm going to go to properties over here and I'm going to go to general and then inside of general it's going to ask me which tag do I want to assign this to. I'm just going to click the three dots and then I'm going to select temperature. And you'll also notice in our type area, it's got the mode as input output, and you can drop this down to be an input or just an output. Now for this thing here, this is gonna be our set point. So this is gonna allow the operator to actually enable a set point to type in whatever he wants the temperature to go to. So I'm gonna leave this as an input output. This will then also display the value that's inside of that data register. For my actual, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to just an output. So I'll do that now. I'll go to my actual IO field, select the tag as temperature again, and then that is just going to be an output. This won't allow us to actually change any value on our actual IO field. This is just going to be for display. 
Now, if I just go back to my set IO field, you've got your format over here and it's telling us what display format do we want to show it as? Do we want to display it as binary, date, date and time, decimal, hexadecimal, string, or just time? I'm going to display this as decimal as this is going to be easily read by the operator. If I change this to binary, the operator is going to have quite a time trying to read out what the current temperature is. So I'm just going to select it as decimal. And the decimal places here is currently set to zero. If I change that to one decimal place, you will now see a decimal place appear in the value. I'm just going to leave this as a whole number. And then here we've got the format pattern, how we want to display this value. And all I'm going to do is display this as two digits because my temperature is only going to go up to 20 degrees or so on this HMI. So I'm just going to display this as S99. There we go. And that now displays it as two digits. And I'm going to do the same thing for my actual. So leaving it as decimal and zero decimal places and just display that as two digits as well. Now what we can actually do with this is in our set point, we can then go to appearance and we can change the background color and also the text color of our IO field so we can customize it and we can do that with our actual as well. And if we go over to security at the bottom, we can actually enable some security on here as well. So maybe we don't want the operators to change the set point. We want the maintenance or the upper level of operators to change the set point. We would then add some authorization here on the security aspect, which we'll cover later on. For now, we're not going to enable that just yet. So that there is going to be my set point finished. Now, if I just open up our actual what I can then do is I can go to the animations and then I can select add new animation and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in a range which is going to change color depending upon what the temperature is so I'm going to select appearance and then I'm going to select ok and then it's going to ask me what tag do I want to refer to and I want to refer to my temperature integer select that from here and what I want to do is I want to enable the range to be zero to 10 degrees and what I'm going to do here is if the range is between 0 and 10 the background color is going to be a green if however the range is 11 to 15 I want the background color to be an orange to let them know they're going into the upper range of the temperature and if it's 16 to 20 I want that then to be a red and if we wanted to, we can also have this flash, so we can let this flash like a warning lamp. And I'll tell you what, we'll do that now just so we can see what that looks like. I'm then just going to select yes, and then that sets up our range for our actual. So what we'll be able to do is change the value inside of the set point. We'll actually be able to edit that, and then we'll be able to change the value inside of the actual, and we're going to do this via a push button. So we can click on the push button, and that will then change. So to enable that, again, inside of our elements folder, I'm just going to select my button. I'm then going to add that button into here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the properties, go to the general and I'm going to call this button increase like so and I'm going to go to events and then from inside of here I'm going to drop this down the function and I'm going to go to calculation script this time and I'm going to select increase tag and the tag that I want to increase is going to be my temperatures tag and I want to increase it by the value of 1, which means when I press this button, the tag temperature is going to increase by 1, and then I'm going to do the same thing, however, this time, I'm going to decrease it by 1 when I press this button here. So decrease tag, select my temperature, and then decrease it by 1. So go to properties here and call this a decrease. There we go. So here, what we're going to be able to do with this is we're going to be able to edit the set point by actually typing in a value. And what we'll see is it'll display in both. I'm not too worried about that just yet. This is just a test here just to show you how IO fields work. And then we won't be able to change the actual value, but we will be able to increase and decrease it through here. And you'll be able to see it then hit the ranges and the color of the actual IO field change as well. So what I'm going to do is save my project. I'm then going to go to the simulation. I'm then just going to select OK. And now we're inside of our data field. And currently you can see that the set point is currently zero. So our current actual value is going to display that as green. 
if I just try and click on the actual value, nothing will happen. It won't allow me to do anything because this is purely just output, which is purely just display. If I click on set point, however, you can now see that I can now enter a value. So if I enter in 10, for example, and enter that, you will now see that the set point has now changed and our actual value has now changed as well. So now what I can do is I can then press my decrease and what we should see is the value in these areas change. Select decrease, and there we go. 9876543210. And now if I click increase, it's now increasing the value. And watch when it goes to 10, 11, now it changes state to amber to let me know that the actual value is going slightly too high. If I select increase again, increase again, increase again, increase again, and then finally going to 16, now it's gone to red. And you can see now it's flashing. It's flashing slowly, but it is flashing. And there we go. So now we can see that we are in the danger area. We're in the danger zone like Top Gun. So if I now decrease it back down to 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, we're in the warning zone. And now if I decrease it back down to 10, it's now green to allow us to display it as a healthy value. As I mentioned before, these two wouldn't be tied to the same tag. All I'm trying to do here is just show you that we can edit one cell whilst we can't edit the other. We would usually tie set point to a tag and then actual to another tag so that the set point is what we are trying to achieve whilst the actual value is showing you what's actually coming in from the real temperature. But for now, this is just a test just to show you how these chaps work. And that's it, that there is our IO field, and that there's set up for input and output and just display as well. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to IO fields. Next week, we're going to have a look at trends, and we're going to have those two values there trending on a graph, allowing us to see historical values as well as current values. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.